Good. I think we're good. All right, what's up, guys? Uh, it's Pablo. I'm going to be doing some Battle Network 6 mod cards analysis today. I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, been a minute since I've been doing so, but it's a new year, so I'm trying to get back into this. Hope you guys enjoy. Uh, I'm going to be looking into a very interesting match that happened in 2020. This was uh, from the King of Net Battle Miracle Championship tournament. That was um, Battle Network 6 with uh, Kaiso cards and mod cards, you know. Master format, as some people know it as well. And I faced a very interesting individual. I faced Ryu, also known as Ryu D, who turns out to be a pretty good player from that time, uh, all the way from Peru. Uh, I would dare say maybe the best um, be a Peru player uh, I know. Also the champion of King of the Battle Miracle Championship. So I wanted to just make this video because this is the first time I ever fought him. And I... Just from playing him, I could see the potential, and he went on to deliver. So I want to take you guys through that um, recollection, analyze this match, let you know what I was thinking, and how it struck to me that he was pretty good just from facing him this first time. This is the first time that we played, and in this tournament, it was undisclosed setup. That means that we didn't actually know what each other were playing. So we had to, you know, play by ear, find out what was happening, and have some fun playing about network. I hope you guys enjoy. We're going to start now the analysis. I'm going to start watching the match. I'm doing this live on Twitch, so in case there's any issues, do let me know in the chat. And I hope you guys in YouTube enjoy. Anyways, on to it. Let's start. Right off the bat. This is uh, mod cards that said, so we have modification cards happening. Let me take a look at that opening hand real quick. Uh, I have Gregor version. I'm running Heat Body. Uh, some people may know I play a lot of video man in mod cards. Uh, that gives you initial fast gauge and charge shot conveyor panel forward. So you'll be seeing that a lot as we start out. Uh, I have a pretty good hand here. I have the bug fix. That's, that's a good thing. I have the double beast, I have anti-damage, I'm just going for an old technique, you know. Starting out the match, if I have double beast in my hand, I'm just going to try and wait out a uh, cutting chain and try to sneak that in there. Slight pause there, looks like connection might not be the best. And my opponent, Ryu, is Farsal version, he's playing Dust Cross. Goes for the arrow grab, so I counter with the double beast, as I mentioned, just waited out an activation. No defense after the fact, so... He may get the area, but I get the 420 damage. Double beast, great chip. I do, however, have cutter bug, so I will be blind. I don't know what's happening really, but he just throw out the ground man. Was that ground man normal ground man or ground man is speed? Ground man normal. Okay, so this most probably was the uh, Ryu's wreck chip. So maybe some beat fodder. Trying to scout out if I have beat support. Which eliminates a Mega or a Giga Chip on activation. Bug fix comes through. I have to eat the charge shot though. Okay. But I get it. Okay, all good, all good so far. I shouldn't have used the anti damage versus that Grauman, I think. Uh, I could tank the hit. No biggie. Save the anti damage for next turn. Let me see the hand. So. Okay, Die Power comes through, some defense as well. Another anti damage, that will be the second one though. You can only have three in the folder, so gotta watch out with that. Looks like I'm going for it either way. Interesting. Let the music rock a little bit, I'm gonna turn the volume. Yeah, uh, multiplayer is too active in BL6 for sure. Ooh, I get hit with the Aqua Dragon, so that's H code or possible S. That forces me into tapping for the Life Aura, however the damage was already done. Ryu D also goes for the full cost. I think he's still in Dust Cross, I haven't taken that off, so makes sense. Trying to get another turn, sneaking in the damage. I stay. I don't. I, I could have done charge cross here, maybe, but uh, maybe I'm trying to save it, trying to scout out if I have any, um, if I'm facing any possible BDT or you know just trying to bait out Tomahawk. It's good to save if if, the, if, you're, if you're playing in undisclosed setups and you don't know what the opponent is is playing. Uh, I would heavily suggest that round one you try and save your crosses. 
and try to see, you know, what, what what's the game plan there. That is if you can spare it, like if you're in a good spot. Popping the, the Grauman, so I'm doing the same thing that Ryu did before. You saw how he popped the Grauman just raw off the dome. He was trying to scout for beat. I'm doing the same here. I now confirm that my opponent has beat, so I need to be mindful of that for the for the rest of the set, because then, uh, if I if I weren't to activate the beat before, maybe if I try to go for my beast out, uh, Gregar corner force attack, then you know beat would go and take that chip away, right? So, gotta do it. That blindness appears to be quite a disadvantage for PvP. So it is definitely annoying, but um, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, I also have it. It's part of color box. So color box happens when you have five different, uh, more, more than four different colors in your in your Navi customizer. So if you have five colors, that will be color box level one, which gives you, I think, five seconds of a different status. That side of blindness, uh, green invincibility, um, in base, normal in base, or confusion. And if that's color bug level two, then that would be 10 seconds. Since I am in fast gauge because of my video man card, that's four seconds per custom gauge, 4.8 seconds or something. So that will be up to two or three turns, depending on how much the activation happens. Yes, I do not have box up in here. I, I don't mind the box. I'm rocking with it. Popping the, ooh, nice, nice. Did, how did I catch that? I didn't, I was just lucky. Oh, wait, no, because of the... Oh, I saw... Oh, was that it? So you can see how it, 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 there's a brief second in which he shows up. So I'm in the position. I'm just mashing here my erase, man. Hoping it hits, and it does hit. It also takes the anti-damage. So I'm in a good spot here. If he had been... This is a good situation because here... um. I didn't actually take a look, but you can see the indication of the D-Cross here, because I, uh, he, he, he appears here, but the effect, you can see, let me let me take that back. I don't know if I can, I'm explaining myself clearly, but the effect of when he gets D-Crossed, that little like white sparkling effect. See this one, starts to come up. You can see that it happens on this panel, not on this one. So I was trying to get the charge the charge shot here, thinking he was above, to get the area lock, make him get stuck here. Because if he has a conveyor panel here, like what happens here basically, oh, it doesn't activate. Interesting. Anti-damage versus the area grab. I have Ifora, so I don't get hit. Gotta watch out for this. Element man times two though. It does connect, takes up my Ifora. To have the anti damage. Anyways, yeah, uh, interesting interaction. Yeah, the movement there helped um, Ryu avoid the possible area lock. That was good for him. Goes for Tengu. Here, I can imagine a potential attempt to pull. As you can see there, he tries to do the fan. But also, I could see either. Uh, what would you say? An area grab coming, trying to area lock me in the back. Or I get done. Let's see what happens. I hit. Should have waited for that element, man. I could have maybe used it to take out the anti damage after instead of there. But it's all good. I still get it off. Area grab connects. I get one panel back. Not the best, but all good. All good. Rush comes in. It's my Imbis, so I confirm that my opponent has both Beat and Rush. I'm gonna cross here to cross cancel the stun animation, going into Charge Cross now. So I can be fully active frame 1 once the turn starts. And I'm going for some negative chips. I didn't see which ones, but let's see. Proto Man here would be a good one. Let's see, does it connect? It does connect. Sword Element versus Tengu. It decrosses for 300. That's nice. Ooh! I did get uninstalled, that's that's uh, a little bit uh, dangerous. Let's see what happens here. We're gonna trade stun. Judgment versus the erase man. Ryu, maybe waiting it out. I don't know if he activated there. I'm gonna mash. Couldn't get the, I, I should have just gone for the, for the wind rack there. Got the confirmed damage and then buster after. 
I think the buster does make it so... Um, sorry, I think the wind racket does make it so the star wears off for him. So, I don't know. I, just, I was just trying to get the most damage possible, but I didn't... I didn't mash fast enough. Maggon comes in, gonna go for the uninstall. Life Aura comes through though, not gonna be it. Unfortunate, and he gets a counter hit even. This is where Ryu starts to get active. I'm gonna have to go into the defense. You can see here that I've already dropped both of my fast gauges. I haven't activated them. I'm already in fast gauge, so I don't need it. And I'm not seeing any gauge movement from here, so, uh, from him. So I'm thinking, oh, he's not gonna do anything of that sort. And I'm just fine rocking with what I've got right now. I'm stuck here. I can get the hit. He does get the charge shot. Looks like he has the um, elect pulse charge shot. Not sure which card it is, but um, not bad, not bad. If he gets the arrow dog like he did here, he gets a confirmed hit. So he's forcing me to have to recover my area. You see me hovering over the grab revenge. Going for it raw. So, hmm. Interesting situation here. Let me see. He goes for Bug that Thunder, so that's where I'm starting to get surprised. Like, oh shit, this guy's this guy's trying to go for some for some, you know, like um if I say Bug that Thunder, I'm thinking he's gonna go for some slow gauge maybe, and I just throw down my fast gauge, so I need to like, you know, uh, you know, have to be on the lookout for that. But also he is activating Bug the Thunder. So here I have the opportunity to activate something in return. Because, you know, if he tries to following the cutting chain, that would eliminate his bug that thunder afterwards. So, you know, I decide to go for it, and I activate the grab revenge. I could have waited the grab revenge for after he activated the bug that thunder when he's charging, because since it, since it pushes him back, that would reset the charge animation. Rush comes through. Gonna punish here. Not just doing buster shots. I don't get any procs. That the uh, times 10 damage. I don't I don't get it. That's okay, that's okay. I'm in position here for my Gregor, that's good. I also have very advantage, so I could have also gone for the uh corner falls. Extra area grabs in hand as well. However, I decided to avoid it. Cup batch, same situation as before. I have the opportunity to cut into his hub batch. If he decides to counter my Gregor here, he will lose his hub batch, so I basically can, you know, capitalize on that. And he does, he drops the hub batch, the, the madman, and it's not even gonna help him. He's still gonna hit the hit. He's gonna get the area back, that's cool, but you know, I, I don't know why he decided to do that. Maybe, you know, the nerves or whatever. Gonna be, you know, oof, and, and, oof, wow, I don't know what's going on. Come on, Ryu, no. I'm talking so good about you. Area grab comes in. I'm uninstalled. So, yeah. Here, um, interesting. Yeah, I'm just gonna slash him to death, basically. I use the focus at the end because that way I can exit out in case he tries to do any crazy plays. Yeah, that's it. I like that movement there. Did you see that? Woo! The slide with the ice. That was nice. That was nice. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Okay, that's round number one. So I'm beating Ryu 1-0 so far. Uh, I think it's looking good. However, he did get some situations there where I was like, oh shit, I, I, I need to like, you know, counterplay this. Um, usually when I'm playing someone I don't know, I get really comfortable. So it's like, you know, I'm just trying to like play and see what they do and you just chill. Like you could see I didn't go for my groundman there. I didn't go for my corner force either. You know, I'm just like, let's see what this guy's about. And he really had something to show so far because, you know, it was like, okay, I still can spare doing this kind of stuff, but I can't like, for example, I, I can't really like drop my gauges or stuff like that. Maybe he can go and do and do something there. That's where my head is at right now. We did have a disconnect, I think, so we had to connect again for round number two. That's the one I'm gonna show right now. So yeah, uh, how's it looking so far? What do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the chat. I'm gonna take a sip of water real quick and get ready for the next one.
One second, guys. Sorry, I had a bonk hit. <laughs> Anyways, um, where were we? Okay, that's what I want to know. How did this match happen after doing a match via BBAM, but nothing happened? Um, uh, I think the the good one for Visual Boy Advance is Visual Boy Advance Link. So, uh, we play by connecting through BBA Link, and using also uh BPN. In this case, I think it was Rapmin or Hamachi. You know, because it, it asks for an IP, so instead of like showing your actual IP, you use one of those, and that's the way you connect. Uh, I have a guide on the YouTube channel, uh, so that you can check it. Uh, it's how to play BN6 online, something like that. You can look it up. Uh, I would also recommend you check out uh, maybe M1GP. They have the correct version for BB-8 that allows you to connect. And all the stuff that you may need to play. So definitely check that out in case you're interested in looking how to connect. Uh, once you get the hang of it, it's not really that complicated. Anyways. We're going to the next match now. So this is round number two versus Ryu. I am 1-0 so far. Let's see how it goes. I already know... I, I have an idea already of what he's trying to go for. I know his Giga is Bug the Thunder. I know he has Beat. I know he has Rush. I know he is Fossil version. So, you know, I have uninstalled in my hand. I have the delivery there. So I'm just going to go for it. Fuck it. Why not? It looks like I'm also going to try and burn one of my gauges. I haven't seen any gauge activity from him. So I'm just going to, like you know, throw that away to have some fluidity in my folder. I get the uninstall. However... Not the best position, I would say. Why? Let me tell you why. Because, yeah, here we're dancing, but I, I, I'm activating at the bottom. He's at the top. And Maggon usually... Maggon will always start at the bottom. So, he has an opportunity to see it coming. You can see how the cursor appears before the shot. So, you know, and it's Maggon 1, it's not, it's not even the fastest, it's actually, it's actually the slowest of the Maggons because it's, uh, it's level 1. So, usually you want to try and bait them down towards the bottom, instead of being here, they should be here. So you can try and get the confirm hit. In this case, it looks like maybe he wasn't ready, so he, I still get the uninstall, that's good. But, hey, I don't mind. Anti-damage versus anti-damage. Well, it's a trap. Who knows? But I, I'm guessing it's the most common one. It's anti-damage. So let's see what happens. I have the I have the ground man SP in hand. However, I do have the rocks to worry about. Looks like I'm gonna push them off with the wind rack. Maybe I'm gonna try and also get some area. Let's see the play here. Have some defense too. The barrier 200. Gonna throw out the second fast gauge as well. Oh, the position allows him to get the anti-damage. We do trade though, he doesn't move in time. I think the end lag of the Elect Pulse Charge Shot doesn't allow him to. Gets the area grab, gonna be a little bit complicated. I do get the wind rack though, that's good. Area grab versus ground man, gonna get the hit. Will the rocks break the... Yes, they do. Since they are breaking, the rocks that ground man uh, throws out, they are breaking elements, so they will destroy any object that they touch. I get the area grab to recover my area. And... Wait, what's this? I think I may have burned my SP. Yes, I did burn my Grauman SP. Either I didn't care or I didn't remember. It could be either of those. Yeah, not a good, not a good play there. But anyways, let's let's see how it continues. I have my two W chips here, Double Beast and Barrier 200. So I'm gonna play them now. Looks like here, um. Double Beast is first, 
usually same situation as we saw in the first round. I'm trying to find an activation here. See if he pops something. He pops a trap, so I counter with the double beast. There is no counter, so I get the 420. Good, good, good. Area grab. I don't pop the barrier. Not yet. Oh, I should have popped the barrier. Now I'm uninstalled. Get the area though. That's good, that's good, that's good. Not the best position here, but A. Still winning so far. HP differential is in my favor. Some standard megas. Gonna just pop them for the culture. See what happens here. Goes for dust. Will we see a full cost? I, I don't remember if he has activated full cost yet. I do get the erasement point blank. Oh, but I miss! That's oh, that's a big oopsie, Pablito. Oof. Gonna get the rush support though. Okay, I can't hit him because I'm uninstalled. That's so bad, man. Every everything's derailing right now. Everything's going bad this turn. I don't know what's happening. I will get the groundman though. That will get rid of the trap. Shit, Hamachi. I was hoping that I wasn't gonna have to use this again. You, uh, well, so you can use Hamachi or Radmin. Radmin is has been implemented recently. It has. Uh, it it works. I think it's pretty fine. I have both, so in case Radmin doesn't work, I often switch to Hamachi or vice versa. So yeah, you can try either of those, or you can try uh, direct port, but I think that you have to share your actual IP for that one, so, you know, whichever you prefer. Anyways, uh, let's get back to it. So where were we? I do remember that, yeah, I, I activated the ground man. Who? That, that's how he's gonna take care of the anti-damage. I move down to avoid the hit. And let's see what happens here. I think I haven't popped the rush yet, so I'm gonna try and activate that first so I can get rid of it for the reminder of the game. I also have the Gregor, so let's see if we can get the play here. I don't like the field. I don't like the field for this. I do know that I can get the stones after the bread either way, but you know, gotta watch out, gotta watch out. Rush. Yes, rush hasn't been activated, so we get rid of that. Let's see the field here. I don't like the position. If he stays in the middle, that's good. Like, if he stays there, that's great. Gregor versus... Yeah, of course, I know. If you can see... Usually... You, you can see this coming, you know? The turn's running by. No one's popping a button. This guy has defense. Or I have defense, you know? It's like the mind games. We know that we both have uh, something holding. We're waiting for an activation. So it's like, see who pops it first. In this case, I decide to pop first. You never want to pop first. You never. Never. So, uh, the bread hits. That's good. Gonna get rid of the anti-damage. Also gonna mess up the field. That's good. But this may coerce Ryu to try and use Tango Cross for the air shoes. Or maybe go Beast out. Let's see here. I do have the corners in, the corner force in hand. So, I can set up for something in the later game. Typhora. Area grab. Okay, we're going neutral. Race man, have my barrier, so I'm protected. Not anymore though. What happens here? Judgment. I can counter here with Imbis. Don't get hit. Nothing that's going on. The screen makes sense to me. Yeah, it, it, it can it can be like that. <laughs> it do be like that sometimes. Anyways, uh, he has Life Aura, so Life Aura can only be destroyed with something that does. 200 or more damage. I do not have anything like that in my folder right now, so I have to use my wind rack because it's wind element and barriers or auras can be eliminated with a wind element chip, as we can see here. I'm popping it, but he's also popping the bug that thunders his giga chip. Fulcus comes into play, area grab tries to get the area control. Element man as well. I'm in in beast, so I'm not gonna have to take the hit. I do activate the life aura though, so you know. Just because, right? Not the best though because I'm forced into either having to rock the next turn with my prior hand which is the anti-damage or go with a new hand. In this case it seems like I don't give a fuck so I'm just gonna activate, I'm just gonna take a new hand basically. The 
Let's see, let's see. Customizing. He did one for the full cast. Pressure. Interesting. Bug fix. Anti damage afterwards for the second layer of defense. And the slow gauge finally comes out. After dropping my two fast gauges at the start of the game, thinking I wasn't going to need them, my man here has them. So I'm going to have to pop the grab revenge. This is going to push him back. No, it's not because he doesn't have any shoes. He gets to keep the area. I do remove the Invis though. Grab revenge does remove Invis, so that's good. Anti-damage helps protect me from the double beast. So I mitigate 420 damage. He is uninstalled, so I can flinch him and avoid the bug the tunnel. You can also see that because I am putting on the pressure with slash cross, I am forcing him to go back as soon as he gets the opportunity. So I get the advantage and go with the area grab. And I can slash away at him in slow gauge. I do not mind the slow gauge here because I'm in a position in which I can just spam my DPS and just basically kill him if he doesn't have any defense. I also have the corner forcer, but I'm waiting. I'm not using it. I don't know why I'm not using it. Maybe I'm being disrespectful. Hop batch. He's gonna have shoes back. That's good. Judgment. Ooh, bad bottom plus. Judgment goes over in beast, but it doesn't go over holes. Oh man, we're both playing so bad. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. And yeah, I, yeah, that, this is this basically the game. Uh, I have the damage output. He recognizes that he doesn't get to charge because of the flinch, so he's just spamming Buster. He's not spamming it in the best way, he's just like, I don't know, moving about. I'm just mashing A here, I don't even care about the... about getting him frozen with the ice. Throw the man comes in. Will I be able to kill in this turn? I think I may... Yeah, I will kill, yeah, yeah, with the judgment, I reset the flinch. GG's. GG's, that's um that's that's versus Ryu. That's 1-0. That, that's 2 0, sorry. That's 2-0. Um give me a sec. Let me put on some music here for the outro of this analysis. That's basically the match. That was my very first set with Ryu ever. Now, what happened there? What did we learn? Well, Ryu's pretty good. I was actually surprised because um, first turn he got a couple of good uh, area grabs versus me. And after that he was also able to... How would I say? I, was, I wasn't expecting him to be um, so much of a threat. And you know, it was 2-0. It, it was but um, I like what I saw. He had good ideas. He had some notion of what to do. It seems that he has studied the game or he has seen matches because he's going with a bug that thunder. Double slow gauge, I'm sure. I don't know if he has one or two, but he at least had one. And me dropping my fast gauges was like putting myself wide open to him. If a better player, uh, you know, if you do that against a better player, it will fuck you up, you know? I'm not able to maybe play out 15 turns of slow gauge, maybe, I don't know. It really depends on the position. So uh, I luckily was able to, you know, not succumb to that. But, you know, that's that's potential for something. If he keeps playing, if he keeps, you know, just like um, trying to go for that strat and getting more like notion of what he needs to do or when he needs to pop buttons, when he needs to like, you know, stay mindful of like, hey, am I not over a hole? Will my mega chip hit? Will I connect here? What's my confirms? You know, all that kind of stuff. I think that he has more potential. I will say though that um, the last time we played, me and Ryu, he beat me. He beat me in pools of M1GP's Blood Moon, and he actually was the only person that beat me in the entire tournament. So um, he's definitely been improving a lot, and I look forward to facing him more. That is the story of Peruvian legend Ryu, and my first match with him ever. What did you guys think? Did you guys like it? I hope you did. Uh, I record this live on Twitch and this is gonna go up on YouTube in case you guys like this I have a bunch other more stuff on YouTube available. I have a bunch bunch of playlists So feel free to check that out 
um, some matches, some analysis, some tournaments, you know, all that kind of stuff. I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure to see. And yeah, that's it. That's it. That's for this one. I'm going to do another one right now, but that's the end of the video for YouTube, basically. So, okay, let me stop there. Okay, cool.